Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial at www.audibletrial.com slash heroes, villains, and sidekicks. Over 180 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Episode 41, Cassidy. This week on the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick show, we'll be covering the drunken past of one of my favorite characters in DC Vertigo's amazing series, Preacher. And it's a fairly long history since this character is about 119 years old uh, due to the fact that he is an immortal vampire who has to wear sunglasses in the, uh, well, the daytime or nighttime to cover up what his eyes look like. Uh, and a little spoiler here, well, I guess it isn't a spoiler, I'm going to tell you, they're blood red, so he wears these glasses. So, you may have guessed it, today we're going to be talking about Cassidy, the vampire that has more than just a taste for blood. And I want to remind everybody, if you get a chance, head over to iTunes and leave a review. Reviews really help a show out, they move you up to the boards, up the rankings, and help more people learn about it. So again, head over to iTunes. I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review. Also, don't forget to head over to the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekicks.com site for episodes. If you go over there, you can listen right on the page or, again, go over and subscribe. But if you head over to the episodes page, there are posts for each and every one of our shows. And in those posts are the text from the episode, but there are also tons of pages from the comics. So the things I'm describing here on the cast, you can actually see the original pages that uh, I've uploaded. And it's just, it's to me, it, it's cool to see the pages that I'm talking about. Uh, I know when I'm doing the research for these, it's fun to reread them. So uh, head over to Heroes, Villains, and Sidekicks.com, the episodes page, look for the post or look for the episode you want to hear, and take a look at some of those pages. The character of Cassidy was created by the amazing writer Garth Innes and the late great artist Steve Dillon way back in 1985. It is weird, I have to say, way back in 1985, but way back, to me, it's just a few years ago, right? But no, it's quite a few actually. But so, way back in 1985, and he first appeared in Preacher Number no. One, published by Vertigo's or DC, DC's Vertigo imprint. And I can remember picking this off the shelf. I loved Vertigo titles at the time, still do, uh, although I'm into the young animals a little bit more lately, uh, imprint, but uh, then, boy, Vertigo comics, they were it. And as I mentioned in the intro, Cassidy is a vampire who's been on the planet here for quite some time after his transformation, but we'll learn he really hasn't learned a whole lot. He's really a bit of a selfish a-hole uh, that, in his time, has destroyed many lives and has just left, you know, just a wake of misery in his past. Once uh, we finally get some background on Cassidy, uh, one character, you know, really sums it up. We start to learn about him. And there's a character that has known him for a while, and he says about Cassidy, I honestly don't believe he's an evil man, just careless and thoughtless and terribly, terribly weak. And I have to agree, this totally sums up this character. Uh, <laughs> when we learn about everybody else, it's this, uh, it's, it's a terrible background. You know, when we learn what happened to uh, Jesse in episode 40, if you haven't heard that episode, go back and listen to episode 40 about Jesse Custer. Uh, you know, we feel sorry for him. And when we learn and when Cassidy's background unfolds, um, we don't feel sorry for him. He is not not a good person, not a good vampire person, however you want to call him. Like all of you know, or uh, are just about to find out uh, listening to the show, <laughs> I've been, because I've talked about it in the in the, the Preacher, the Jesse uh, episode, episode 40, uh, I uh, have been reading comics since I was 12, love them, and Preacher ranks really in my top five comic series of all time. I love this title, like, it came out in the golden age of Vertigo, and it had really two of the most creative, uh, talented uh creators working in comics. Uh, one is unfortunately since passed away and uh, Steve Dillon, but uh, Garth Ennis is still working out there and still doing great stuff. So when I was thinking of doing my first series, I thought I'm going to do it on 
Preacher. There's so many interesting characters. So we've already done episode 40, which was Jesse Custer. We're now doing uh, Cassidy right here. <laughs> and you can look forward to episodes on Tulip, Arseface, <laughs> which is hilarious if you don't know who he is. From the show, you'll get a really uh, a great background on him. We'll learn about uh, Saint of Killers. Uh, we're also going to learn about um, the Grail and Hair Star and some minor characters like Featherstone. And, uh, you know, I think we'll also do one, even though there's not a whole lot of a background on him slash it, we'll do a little bit of a background on uh, Genesis himself, itself, uh, to learn a little bit about that character that we never really get to see other than a disembodied baby head. So before we start in on Cassidy, I want to give a little bit of a background and a plot of the comic in case you haven't listened to episode 40. Uh, Preacher, in short, is about a small-town preacher with a past who, through no fault of his own, has become the host of an uh, all-powerful celestial being known as Genesis. Now, Genesis is a completely new thing. It's a child born from the union of an angel and a demon, and this union uh, between Genesis and uh, Jesse gives him uh, what they would what they call the word of God, and when he channels the power of Genesis and he speaks, and they do this neat little, you know, thing with his voice and his eyes in the in the comic, and when he tells you to do something, you do it. Period. So he says, "Go jump in the lake," and you go jump in the lake. So Jesse uh, Cassidy and his girlfriend um, Tulip, Jesse's girlfriend Tulip. Uh, who is uh, awesome, (laughs) all meet up and start trying to figure out what this thing is that's inside of him and, you know, what this means and and where is God and is, you know, why has God forsaken people? And he decides he's going to go on the road to find God and hold him accountable. And along the way, you know, they come against all sorts of weird bad guys, the Grail, uh, who want him to be the new Messiah and then just want to kill him, to just all kinds of people. It's a really, it's a great series. Um, so that is Preacher in a Nutshell. Again, uh, you want some more background on Jesse and the comic, uh, go ahead and listen to the uh, episode 40 when we do on uh, Preacher Jesse Custer. So now on to Cassidy. Cassidy's full name is, oh, and I was going to look up how to say this. I have no idea. Uh, Prionysis? Pronosis? <laughs> Cassidy? It, uh, I do not know. Um, but uh, we don't learn that for quite some time. But that is his real name. And again, like I sure I butcher that name for sure. And uh, so from now on, I'm just going to refer to him as Cassidy and uh, not uh, not his first name. So Cassidy was born in Ireland around 1900, and we first meet him as he is joining the Irish Volunteers to take arms against the British, and uh, he even takes part in the uh, Easter Rising that really only lasted six days and uh, where the Irish were defeated by the much stronger British troops. Now, Cassidy's brother Billy also joins the volunteers to watch over his brother. But during the uprising, Billy hears, he overhears, and he learns that the leaders of, uh, you know, the uprising are pretty much saying that, you know, this is all for show and it's really just to sacrifice these men to get the word out about their cause. So Billy obviously realizes these people don't care anything about him or his brother or his men. And, you know, he isn't going to just die uh, without honor uh, fighting for a cause like this. So he grabs Cassidy and they desert. Now, they escape, uh, they escape and they're walking along and they're, you know, they're, they're learning about, uh, uh, Cassidy is learning from his brother because he's still really hyped on the mission and everything, that it is just a bunch of crap. That, uh, you know, why, you know, Billy's saying, why are we even doing this? Why do we even care? And, you know, and it, it's funny because it's then that, you know, uh, Cassidy even learns that um, his uh, parents, one was a Catholic and one was a Protestant. And it sort of just shakes him out of this whole, you know, religious sort of zeal for combat. And so they continue along. Now, this is where things, you know, take quite a turn in Cassidy's life. He is now, um, Cassidy is sitting at the edge of a pond, 
uh, getting about to get a drink, and how they describe uh, this thing as a uh, an old hag uh, comes out of the water, and Billy turns to say something to Cassidy, and he sees this hag uh, biting into Cassidy's neck. I mean, there's blood spurting from his artery, and we know that this happens on the 27th of April, 1916. And this Cassidy told this to Jesse when he was sort of recounting how he becomes a vampire. Now, Billy shoots the old woman through the head. Although technically, I guess this should not, this shouldn't kill her, but, you know, we never see her again. So because uh, the vampires in the comic are uh, very hardy, uh, and we'll get to that later, uh, again, I think she must be alive but maybe I'm wrong. We'll, we Again, we never see her. So Cassidy falls into the water because uh, of all the blood loss and he's, you know, he faints. And the, um, the brother runs off. And that's really the last time that Cassidy sees him. I'm sure he thinks, obviously, that Cassidy is dead. Now, when Cassidy tries to leave the water uh, when he wakes up the next day, uh, he leaves the water and he begins to burst into flames. So his you know, arms catch on fire, he just starts to catch on fire. Now we get a sense of really kind of how dim Cassidy was when he was young. Again, he doesn't really get much brighter emotionally, but um, he tries to get out of the water in the daylight four or five more times before he realizes he needs to try it at night. Uh, you would think you would maybe get that the maybe the first time, I would hope the second for sure, but uh, no, four to five times. Now that works like a charm uh, when he gets out, but he is crazy hungry. And he realizes for whatever reason, I guess vampires just know these things, that uh, he needs blood. And he actually tries to eat a sheep, but because uh, it doesn't have to be human blood. Uh, but the sheep, uh, you know, so he's trying to eat the sheep and the, the shepherd hears things and uh, he comes upon him and thinks that he's trying to have relations with the sheep and shoots him point blank in the chest. Now, of course, they're very freaked out when this man just jumps up <laughs> and runs away. And really, it's then that Cassidy realizes that he's changed, that he isn't human anymore. He's super strong, uh, burns up in the sunlight, hungers for blood. He realizes he is a vampire. Now a word from our sponsor. For you, the listeners of the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick show, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day tr trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. One book that I've actually, I finished uh, listening to it, but I want to talk about it again, is the uh, Neil Gaiman's North Myth Mythology. <laughs> and it's actually narrated by Neil Gaiman, who's got an awesome narration voice. It's unabridged. It's about six hours, 29 minutes, and it's really cool. So if you wanted to get that book, all you'd have to do for free, all you'd have to do is head over to audibletrial.com slash heroes, villains, and sidekicks. Again, to get your free audiobook download and free 30-day trial, head over to audibletrial.com slash heroes, villains, and sidekicks for your free audiobook. Now back to the show. After getting back to town, this is after he's been turned, he stops into his local bar, but he's recognized. And it's then he realizes that uh, he needs to leave because, you know, they're, they're like, we thought you were dead. And he, he realizes he needs to live because he doesn't leave. He doesn't want his family to know what he's become. So he hops a ship and heads to America. Now, Cassidy, like any other immigrant uh, coming to the New World, was in awe when he saw the Statue of Liberty. And just the size of the city and how many people were there. I mean, he, you know, he's from this small farming town. But right off the bat, when he got off the boat, uh, he was robbed of his belongings. Uh, so he actually uh, found another bar, big surprise, with Cassidy, called McSorley's Old Ale House. And, you know, while he was there, he saw um, there was a man arm wrestling. And he figured with his vampire strength, he, you know, he could clean up. So he, you know, went over and said, oh, I'll, you know, wrestle you for the money or whatnot. And he, of course, totally beats him. And uh, good thing he didn't break his arm, but he, he definitely, uh, he beat the guy. <laughs> and 
he uh, decides that then there he's going to just be known by Cassidy. He doesn't want uh, anybody to know his first name. Now, there he also meets a man named McCain. Uh, or McCannon? McCann? McCannon. Uh, so I am terrible with names. I teach as well in my uh, when I'm not doing this. And that's the hardest part of the first year, uh, day of uh, any semester, is getting people's names right. And I cannot get people's names right. So McCain, I'm going to say. And they become friends. So uh, Cassidy really just, you know, hangs around and drinks with McCain and his crew for years. But soon he uh, begins to realize that, you know, they're uh, they're aging, and he wasn't. Now, his good friend, McCain, wasn't stupid, and he kind of thought something was different about uh, Cassidy. At one point, he even gives him a copy of Bram Stoker's, uh, you know, Dracula with a, a wink and a nod, but they never really talk about it. And, you know, <laughs> Cassidy, uh, but, you know, at the same point, Cassidy knew it was time to leave because, again, these people are aging, and he is just not... Now, this is where things really start to go downhill for Cassidy. Now, being superhuman, he is a bit reckless. Uh, you know, he, he could have his arm blown out. He could have, uh, you know, a hole blown in him. As long as he gets blood into him, he is going to regenerate. So this makes him, like I said, pretty reckless. If you can survive anything, anything, you really start to take it up a notch in how reckless you are uh, to get that next high. Now, Cassidy, always a drinker, upgrades his vices to drugs. You know, one of his favorites uh, turns out to be heroin. I mean, it's obviously highly addictive. And for someone like him who can do, you know, huge amounts of it uh, without dying, but just getting that high, uh, he really goes off the deep end. So picture a, a heroin addict. And the wake of destruction that usually follows them. Now picture the same addiction and self-destructiveness in someone who can't die. Now, unfortunately, that cannot be said for the women in his life uh, that he uses. And many of them, most uh, most of them, do not live long enough uh, through this, you know, this horrible life of his. And those that uh, do live are just broken and ruined. Um, I mean, Cassidy even shows in these flashbacks where Jesse is learning about Cassidy's past, and that's in episode 40. Uh, you know, he even breaks a woman's jaw. You know, he's angry with her, and he he smacks her, and, and of course, you know, with his strength, he breaks his jaw. Uh, and it's, it's pretty disgusting. Uh, and reading that and other issues, we learn really who he is. And it's tough, because, you know, here's a... Of sort of an affable character in the comic. He's kind of funny to a point. And then we start learning these things. Plus, on top of what he does to Tulip, which you can learn about in 40 and learn about in what will be 42 when we talk about Tulip, you know, he's really a piece of garbage. And now we know it. And I'm curious what you think, because that's how I think about him. And uh, if you have other um, thoughts, go ahead and leave it in the comments below or over on the Facebook page. I'd really love to hear what uh, everybody else thinks of this character. Now, it gets so bad. I mean, it gets so bad for Cassidy at one point. It, they show him, and I've got a page over on the uh, Heroes, Villains, and Sidekicks.com in the episodes page for this post where he looks just skeletal in this hotel room with, uh, and he's just like re eating, um, eating rats, uh, drinking rats and eating them, and they're just like strewn around the hotel room. It's pretty gross. Now, like all addicts, you know, he cleans up and he, you know, he falls off the wagon from time to time, but he sort of leaves the, the drugs behind and, you know, he still drinks like a fish, but he's at least sort of kicked that habit when he really hits that far down that rock bottom. And this is interesting because he actually goes back to McSorley's, that old ale house, and he sees McCann, who is at this point an old man. And, you know, this is the other. This is the the big turning point for him. Now he has fallen off a few times the wagon, but seeing his old friend, you know, old and near death, it makes him realize, you know, the weight of his mortality, and and it. I don't know. It sort of sobers him up again. He still drinks, but he at least kicks the drugs, and 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 he also leaves the Big Apple and he heads south. Uh, he decides again. 
he's not aging. People he knows are aging. He is out of there. He leaves. Now, we learn all this in a couple of different places in the comic. We get Cassidy's origin in issue uh, number 26 of Preacher as he recounts it to Jesse. Uh, They're still friends at this point, and things between them haven't gone to pot yet. It isn't until issue 27 that we learn what a piece of trash he is when Jesse comes in contact with a woman from Cassidy's past who is now like a homeless person. And she recounts the stories of abuse, weakness, and drug abuse that ruined her life and countless others. But before Jesse knew about Cassidy's past, they were close friends, you know, after all the adventures they had had coming together and fighting the Grail and all other insane situations they got, you know, they got pulled into. But in the end, when Jesse confronted Cassidy, he said they were going to settle things and once and for all. And of course, what I'm talking about isn't, I keep saying this, but it's in episode 40 and we'll talk more about it in Tulip's uh, origin episode. You know, uh, Cassidy took advantage of Tulip when she thought, that Jesse was dead, keeping her pretty much, you know, locked up through manipulation and uh, drugs and alcohol to uh, stay with him until she finally broke free. And you know, Cass, uh, you know, Jesse is not happy. He is super pissed, and he says, "We're going to have it out." And he even uses the voice to say, "You know, and you better fight like hell," because that makes him now have to do that. He has to not just sort of roll over. Now. When they did fight right at the end, uh, Jesse uh, kicked his butt. You know, even with Cassidy's super strength and speed, in the end, he doesn't know how to fight. But of course, right at the end of the fight, Cassidy sucker punches uh, Jesse and knocks him out. Now, Cassidy realized he could never make things right, but he realized also that if someone like Jesse could have ever been his friend or ever even thought of him as a friend, you know, he must not be all bad. He must, there must be something in him that, you know, uh, isn't just garbage. And with that, um, with that, that thought and, and Jesse is telling him not to, uh, Cassidy just raises his arms, uh, cause they're fighting at, at, at dawn sun, the sun comes up and Cassidy bursts in the flames and just explodes. And actually right at that moment, uh, the grail delivers its final blow and shoots Jesse in the head, killing him. The end. (laughs) No, just kidding. Now, see, Cassidy made a little deal with God and worked things out for everyone. We find this out later on. Now, things don't end exactly like Cassidy had worked out for God. You know, know, he was supposed to be able to talk. um, Cassidy said, I could talk him into giving up Genesis. But of course, that didn't work out. The betrayal, they fought. And, uh, but in the end, God actually, even though he's not a really good, um, entity person in the comic, he does, uh, hold up his end of the deal. And the deal that uh, Cassidy made was no matter how it ends, no matter what Jesse lives, but here it is. He adds, and so do I. So, yep, in the end, Jesse is alive and well, free from Genesis, but surprise, surprise, so is Cassidy. Now, it's interesting when, when Jesse comes back and he's with um, Tulip and they're riding off in the sunset, the last few pages show, um, or before that, the pages show Cassidy sitting there with the sun coming up. He looks young again. He looks... Um, unravaged by uh, the drinking and the drugs. He doesn't have his glasses on, and he's saying that he hopes that he's learned enough and he can actually be a person and not a completely, totally selfish, as he would say it, arsehole. And he's alive, and everyone's alive. I mean, it's a a funny thing because there's so much death and destruction in the book, but in the end, you know, things work out for Cassidy. Now, on the show, uh, on AMC, I I have just been loving it. You know, is it the same as the comic? No, they've changed some things. Uh, But the one saving grace of anything on the show is Cassidy. 
and why it's because I don't think any other television show has done a better job of casting a character. I love the actor playing Cassidy. Uh, I mean, he completely sells the character. Um, he, well, I should probably tell you who he's played by, and I'm going to ruin his last name too, but I, no, I think I can get this one. So Cassidy is played by uh, Joseph Gilgan, uh, who I cannot, I mean, I, I just love this guy. Um, he is, he's the real deal. I mean, he is perfect. I, I don't know. I, I just keep saying he's perfect. Now, he hasn't been on a lot of things here in the U.S., but man, if you want to see some awesome TV, uh, he's not on until maybe the third season, but either way, watch them all. Uh, I first saw him in the uh, BBC show uh, Misfits, and I believe you can still see all that on Hulu. It, he is just fantastic. Now, They've already started doing a little bit where you're seeing that he is smitten with Tulip. Uh, we don't have anything on his past yet other than the fact that he is a vampire and he can regenerate. So I'm really interested to see what they're going to do with the character and if they're going to sort of, I, I really hope they keep his backstory of what a horrible person he was or what a, what a, a weak person he is. Because I think that just, I mean, it just lends to the depth that the character has. And uh, I'm really looking forward to see it. So uh, if you haven't watched it yet, if you're on the fence, uh, I've read all the Preacher books, all the one-shots, and uh, I dig the show. So uh, if you haven't uh, watched it or you're on the fence, go ahead and check out Cassidy over on Preacher on AMC. Well, I want to thank you for listening to this week's show. Don't forget to check out uh, this episode and other episodes over on the website, heroesvillainsandsidekicks.com. And if you head over to the episodes page, they're all right there. Uh, I actually just redesigned the homepage so you can sort of find things a little bit easier, I hope. Now you can listen to the show there, or better yet, go over to iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play, wherever, and uh, subscribe. And if you head over to iTunes, uh, leave a review. Uh, that would be great. I'd really appreciate it. Reviews uh, sort of help podcasts move up rankings, which help them uh, become noticed by more people, and we can get more listeners. And that would be fantastic. So uh, if you get a chance, uh, go ahead, head over there, two seconds, and leave a review. I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you want to uh, learn maybe a little bit more about things that are going on in the show, uh, I do a lot of posting over at the Facebook page, and I believe the Facebook page is Heroes, Villains, and Sidekicks. If you just do a little bit of a search, you will find it. And I'll actually leave it in the show notes. And actually, don't forget to head over to the site, Heroes, Villains, and Sidekicks, where I post tons of pages from the comics that we're talking about. So you can get a, really a sense of, A, the amazing art, and uh, just see these things happening, because it's pretty cool. Some of these pages in this uh, episode, though, are fairly graphic. Well, again, I want to thank you for listening to the show. We'll be back next week with an episode on Tulip O'Hare. And it's going to be a fun one. So again, we'll be back next week with more. Take care.